Hi, first grade. Welcome to the art room. Um, I'm just making sure my camera, everything looks like it's working okay. So a couple things. I was, our last art lesson was based on a Pete Mondrian tree. And so if you have not had the opportunity to finish that or work on that, please do and make sure you're sharing it. That's really, really important. I really want to make sure that I can see your artwork and see what you've created. Okay, the next thing we're going to be moving on to is something that's a little more simplified. And this is called composition. And he named it very simply red, yellow, blue. Okay, and so when we look at this, we see the yellow, we see the blue, we see the red. And if you notice, it's not the whole painting. There's a lot of white areas, there's black lines. And the reason he was doing that is he wanted to get to the simplest form, the simplest net lines. And so today we're going to actually look and identify what these lines are called. And this is review from kindergarten, but I know that sometimes we can easily get them mixed up or forget, or maybe you haven't learned them that. Okay, so a line that goes from north to south, up and down, that is called a vertical line. So a lot of times I'll say vertical, like you're jumping off a diving board and splashing into the water, okay? The other line I can think about is a horizontal. So think of a race car and it's going horizontal, going really, really fast. And if you look, those are the only two lines Pierre Mondrian used. Same thing in his Broadway Boogie Woogie. This was in the video I shared last week. And this is a great painting to look at and being able to identify, wow, all those verticals, all those horizontals. And so this one was based on city life, looking down on a city, seeing the cars moving, the busyness of a busy city. Okay, so that's what this is based on. But today our focus is going to be on our composition. So in your, your art bag that I set with your teacher, you should have gotten a piece of square paper and you should have received some black strips of paper. What I would like for you to do today is to come up with a really nice pattern and a really nice design, all with vertical, all with horizontal. And instead of just doing like a checkerboard, I want you to notice how in Mondrian's, he actually thought about, oh, you know what, this one's intersecting, but this one is not. It's not intersecting like a T. Um, or like a X, I should say, like a intersecting is like crisscrossing, okay? We don't see that happening. He actually has a line and it stops, okay? So some of these lines are just small ones, but they always meet each other. And so when you're working on this, I want you to look at all of those, those ideas. And so I'm going to quickly do like a little, like just play around with them before I glue it. So um, let me grab some tape and I'll show you what I mean. So I grabbed some tape because I think sometimes it's easy to just put a little tape on here because I am working on the board. But what I want to do is I want to start with the very, very top and make sure that my lines, I did measure them so they should fit your paper perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to really work to make my lines straight so I have a vertical. And I believe I gave each of you four pieces. I'm actually going to do another vertical. And every design is going to be a little different. And that's, that's the beauty of art. Even though we're doing the same artist, same project idea, they're all going to be a little different. I'm going to put that here. So you can see that through this, I'm actually creating rectangles and squares. Now this is where I'm going to use my fourth one. I'm going to do it a little differently. So instead of intersecting, I could think, oh, you know what? Maybe I want to have it coming off of my paper. So you can take your time and come up with some fun designs and patterns. I actually really like that. I'm going to put my little tape on here. Now the reason I'm using tape, like I said, is because I'm working on my design. I'm going to move it up a little bit. All right. Now, once I have my design, then I'm going to take my glue. Now, you can use a glue stick as well. I'm just grabbing a glue bottle. And I'm going to pick these up. 
a little dotted glue. One. I'm really working to make sure my paper's a little crooked, but I can always wiggle these over until my glue dries to make sure they are really, really straight. When I talk about a little bit of glue, I mean teeny, teeny, teeny. Just a little dab will do ya. Black. Okay, and then what I'm going to take, I'm going to do is take my scissors, and what I actually like to do is if I flip my paper over, I can see, see that little black, then I can make sure that I'm not cutting my white, I'm just cutting that black little tab, and I have the start of my own composition artwork, and so it has some qualities like Mr. Wondrian's, but it's also my own, it's a little different, all right, so what I want you to do at this time is to work on your vertical and horizontal. Please remember, no diagonals, okay? We're doing all vertical, all horizontal. We're sticking with the Mondrian, that simplest form. And after I do this, I'm gonna find a little area. Um, this area is a little tiny, so I'm gonna put my name on this corner just for this time, okay? You always wanna show ownership, so I have my name, I have my Mondrian style, and then I'll be back with another video so that you can continue working. So hopefully this is something that you are enjoying and that you're learning a ton about. Okay, so have a great day. Bye. Okay, hi first grade. Hopefully you have this done. This was kind of like where I wanted you to start. And so even if that only took you one day, please remember in the art class at school, very few times do we ever finish thing all in one. By the time we learn it, create like the beginning and so today I'm going to go ahead and move on to painting. So this is a palette that you should have received in your um, in your little art kit that I sent home. There's also a paintbrush in there. So the only thing that you need other than that is a water cup and I grabbed a piece of just a piece of scrap paper because what I'd like to do is just do a quick review. So we were talking about Mondrian's primary colors red blue and yellow. Those are so in color because they can make every other color that we want to use. And so what I'm going to do today is only using my red, only using my yellow, and only using my blue. I want to just see, hey, I want to actually create some new colors. And this is just a review, but with watercolors, you always add like a little puddle. You don't want to scoop it. You don't want it to dig. You don't want it sticky. That's a big thing. And so I'm going to come in here and here's my red. And remember, watercolors are watery, okay? So when you're using them, okay, they're not gonna be as intense as something like oil pastel, All right? So I have a little red, and if I put yellow right next to it, I might actually bring my card a little forwards because I'd like for you to see this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so here's my yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna very gently blend them in the middle. And as I'm blending, you can actually see that I'm making orange. And I want you to actually experience that, not just watch me doing it, but I want you to do that. So take some red, take some yellow, mix them together, and you will make orange. Okay, so let's do another combination. I'll do red again. So here's my red. This is just one of those exercises that helps our mind remember and also learn when we're actually actively doing something. It's going to help us retain that information, remember it. Okay, so there's my red and my blue. And I'm going to mix them together. 
and I am seeing purple. All right, so that's another combination. And my last one would be blue. Now I know sometimes when I'm taping, on, I'm using a Chromebook right now, sometimes the color's a little bit muted. So hopefully you're able to see this. Here's my yellow. And if I mix them, I will actually get green, okay? So I am making those secondary colors. And the reason I wanted to do that is yes, we could just go right in and do one square red, one square blue, one square yellow and be done. But I thought, hey, no, you know, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's take this a step further. Let's make it our own. So we're not just doing the same exact thing that's been done, but let's make it our own. So I'm going to bring my painting down and I have to be really careful because watercolor can drip. So I'm going to be kind of working a little quickly just so it doesn't drip. All right. And what I'm going to ask you to do is out of these color combinations, I want you to pick one. All right. So I'm, I'll do blue and yellow and green. Okay. So I'm going to use the blue. I'm going to use the yellow and I'm going to only use the green. Okay. Just those three combinations. So I think it's fun that you can take two secondary or two primary and have that secondary just to kind of get your mind thinking. All right, so let's come in here. And so I'm only going to paint one square. And as I do this, I'm going to paint really, really slow. And I'm trying to keep my watercolor only on the white of the paper. I don't want it to get on the black. And if your paintbrush ever feels dry, get a little more water. So there's my blue one. And so watercolors, it's going to have a little variety because they are watery. Um, it's not a real solid paint. Okay, the next one, I'm going to really, really wash my brush. Make sure it's very, very clean. And I chose yellow. So I'm going to go, you know, I could do any square, but I'm just going to choose one. I think I'm going to do this little bottom one. Once again, working to stay in the lines. So there's my yellow. Now you could, if you wanted, actually take the blue and yellow and mix it. I'm gonna just take the green right from here. Um, I would really encourage you to do the mixing, but then I can come in and use the secondary color right from my palette. And I'm gonna let you make that decision. I'm actually gonna, I could paint over here because watercolor is so watery, it probably will show through, but I wanna have like some movement. I don't want all my colors on one side. So I think I'm gonna do this one. So like I said, we're taking an idea from an artist, but we're also learning from it and we're creating our very own piece of art. And so we have like just this little study of Mondrian. And please only do one of each color, right? Like one square of each color, just like this one, right? There's only one of each color. We're not doing the whole thing. We wanna see some of that white. Now, if you have extra time, let's say you finish all your schoolwork one day and you're like, oh, Mrs. Barry, I have extra time. Hey, I may not have given you enough paper you know, to do another one. But if you have things at your house that you could, you know, cut some strips, please. Maybe you want to do one, say, oh, I'm going to do blue and yellow to make green. Or I want to do one that's going to be red and blue to make purple. You could actually make a series. That would be awesome. So this is just something 
that I've given you enough things for one, but please, if you have materials at your house, you can always, always build upon that. So we have our own little study here, okay, where we've started with our tree. We did some color mixing to make sure that we knew those two primaries making that secondary. And then we took that and we said, okay, instead of just doing the primary, let's take it a little different and let's take two primaries and make a secondary or our finished piece. So this is what I'm going to really encourage you to finish the next couple weeks. You can work little by little. Maybe you want to work on a painting where you're doing those color mixing. So this is just, um, you know, the beginning and I want you to enjoy it, share it, share a picture. And I hope you all are doing really well and that you're having fun doing art. All right, bye-bye.